Hey guys, welcome back. I am CF Draws, and today I'm going to be taking part in what is by now a very well known um, art trend on YouTube, started by the wonderful YouTuber Jazza. It is a ultimate character design session, or UCD1. And what I did in this video is I took five or four different traits, and I asked my family to pick one trait out of each column, and I ended up coming up with something very, very fun and very, very cool, and I also ended up writing a little bit of a story to go along with it to follow the trend of UCD1. And with that said, I hope you guys like this piece, and I'll see you guys at the end. The small island of Tokazaki was an island off the distant coast of the island of Japan. Although at first glance, this island would be noticeably similar to its larger cousin, in both geology and architecture, this island had a far more grueling past. In the 11th century CE, a small population of dwarven Japanese citizens were outcast from their communities due to their small size, high intelligence, and stubborn and or determined personalities. These citizens were thought to be an unnatural race that resulted from the high amounts of shortanium that was used in the building of many traditional Japanese structures, including homes. This shortanium was actually breaking down over days, months, and even years into a molecular dust that infected the developing babies inside of their mother's bodies. This resulted in a smarter, shorter version of the common citizens of the Japanese country. Years after their birth, these dwarven citizens were collected and sent to a remote island off the far coast of mainland Japan making the normal citizens feel more comfortable now that the unnatural beings were out of their homes, communities, and lives. Years later, the forgotten outcasts of their former society constructed a new, thriving empire known to the dwarven citizens as Tokazaki. This remote island turned thriving empire of Tokazaki was a proud symbol of the abundance of determination that these former outcasts still had even decades after their deportation from mainland Japan. Deep within the bustling kingdom of Tokazaki lived an older yet highly respected dwarf named Hirodo Kashi. Kashi was, re was a respected blacksmith, builder, and former soldier in the Tokazaki army who also founded the use of mechanical parts and equipment for their everyday lives. Since the dwarven people were far smarter than their full-size counterparts, they were able to discover the abilities of mechanical technology far before it was later discovered by better known civilizations. Even with the knowledge of these advanced capabilities, Hirodo Kashi still preferred to serve his people by constructing tools and mechanical equipment for the townsfolk and eventually earned the respect from the commoners that he served. Realizing Kashi's genius and ability to construct anything from seemingly nothing, Hirodo Kashi was called upon by his close friend and ruler of the kingdom, Kano Yashi. Yashi asked Hirodo to build several mechanical weapons to protect and defend the hidden empire of Tokazaki, as he feared an attack from the Koyoki Empire. Just days before, some of Yashi's best men spotted Koyoki ships scouting around their beloved island home. Yashi feared that they had remembered the seemingly lost history of their people, and that the Koyoki Empire would soon raid them for their abundance of gold, silver, and most importantly, their mechanical technology. Knowing the risks, Kashi still refused to say that his days of war were over, and he left Yashi even more fearful of the devastation that would come of an undefended raid. After months of no attacks from the Koyoki Empire, Kashi felt as though he had made the right decision to not build mechanical weapons to defend his island home. Even though Hirodo Kashi was a peaceful man, he had formerly served his people as a soldier seeing himself in their ranks as a great benefit. Hirodo had then turned away from conflict after seeing too many of his close friends and even family members die in front of him. That is exactly why Kashi decided not to construct mechanical weapons and tools for destruction against an empire that had not even made a move of attack. After months of peace, the Koyoki Empire finally decided to rain terror on the hidden kingdom of Tokazaki, sending all of the people on the island into a terrified panic. The Koyoki soldiers struck the island at night, giving them the element of surprise and the cover of darkness to protect them. After scouting Tokazaki many times, the leaders of the Kuyoki army had not expected any threats, but they could never be too sure, which is exactly why they decided to attack at night. Once the soldiers ambushed the first marketplace, they left the island in a frenzy, leaving a path of destruction behind them. 
the Koyoki army had silently set fire to many buildings within the heart of Tokazaki while also successfully stealing valuable items, weapons, mechanical equipment, and precious elements such as gold, silver, and steel. When the kingdom of Tokazaki awoke, they were met with a harsh greeting of destruction and fire, while the townsfolk immediately rushed towards one of Hiroto Kashi's greatest inventions, the mechanically pressurized water spout, Kashi himself was staring at the destruction that had come from him not creating mechanical weapons for defense and, most importantly, protection. Kashi felt terrible for the wrong that he had done to his beloved home, but he still felt as though he could do good. Deep within the workshop of Hiroto Kashi stood an eight-foot-tall mechanical suit of armor, or currently known as a robot, that was originally made for Kashi to help fix and build things that were too large or daunting for Hiroto to work on. Kashi decided that his people needed something or rather someone to defend them from any future threats since he already could tell that there were more attacks to come. Hiroto Kashi immediately began to work on adding armor and weapons to his new defense and protection for his fellow dwarven citizens. Once Hiroto had finished his work, he started to pilot his armor, which had then taken the form of an 8 foot tall samurai warrior, which he named the Iron Samurai. This Iron Samurai who was never unmasked, took the liberty of taking down many lines of defense and attack from the Koyoki Empire, leading the island of Tokazaki to successfully remain minorly harmed and with no major casualties or disturbances to their mechanical technology that they had stored up. It is because of Kashi and the Iron Samurai that the island of Tokazaki still exists but is still unknown to the rest of the world. So there we go, that is this week's video of my contribution towards UCD1, Jazz's great ultimate character design session, ultimate character design challenge. Um, I think the Iron Samurai turned out so well and I love the story. It took me like all day to write that story and a few days to do the artwork, but I think it turned out really well. And I think I should start doing more random prompts like artworks because I really liked how this Iron Samurai turned out and I really enjoyed the process of creating it from these random prompts and I hope you guys enjoy this artwork too and I hope you guys share this UCD1 artwork with other people and go check out Jazz's video if you haven't already great artist great video great channel and to wrap this video up because it's been pretty long or longer than I usually have them. Don't forget to hit the like button 
If you like this video and this drawing and want to support UCD1, and if you want to support me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and so you never miss another video, don't forget to turn on post notifications. So you will get reminded every time I post a new video, since I don't have a regular upload schedule. And now, with all that said, I'll see you guys in the next one.